Mascot horror is unfortunately one of the most popular game genres today. Starting with FNAF all the way back in 2014, now with hundreds of games that are still hopping on that trend. When you think of mascot horror, you probably think of the most popular ones. FNAF, Poppy Playtime, Garten of Ban Ban, and yes, while these are the heads of mascot horror, there's plenty more mascot horror games that are buried deep within the internet's waters. Today, I'm going to be going through a bunch of these that I found online and trying to uncover the hidden lore behind each of these. A lot of them have not released yet, so I'll have to piece together what I can, and every theory I come up with isn't confirmed. For some of these games, I'll actually be speaking directly with the developers themselves to ask questions about their game's lore and development. I will also link each of these games in the description so you can check them out yourself and to support the developers who work hard on these projects. As I go through these games, I won't try to bash them with harsh criticisms as I don't think that would help. Instead, I'm simply looking to analyze their stories, gameplay, and development, as well as come up with my own theories on different story details in the games. Make sure to check out each game in the description. With all that out of the way, let's jump into it. The first game on the list is Toytopia. Toytopia takes place in some sort of abandoned children's attraction. This genuinely looks high quality. It's interesting how mascot horror games typically are unoriginal cash grabs with poor quality, but Toytopia actually looks like a quality game. This game hasn't been released yet, so there's no way to know the full story or mechanics of the game. However, the game is scheduled to release soon, so by the time you're watching this, it could already be out. But for now, we have the Steam page and two trailers to go off of. Firstly, there seems to be two main characters in the story of Toytopia. There's this mascot who resembles a fox. He looks very threatening, and he's featured on the Steam thumbnail. He looks to be one of the side villains of the game. The second character is this mysterious man in a suit with a top hat. We can see him on this cardboard cutout and this gold statue. He also appears in the trailer for a few seconds and has a massively tall slender figure. We can also see that he actually has some dialogue indicating that he may be integral to the story of Toytopia. His dialogue reads, I found you. Most likely, this guy is probably the main antagonist of the game that drives the plot forward. There isn't much information about this online as it isn't super well known, which is the point of this video. So, as I waited for this game to release, I actually reached out to the creator of Toytopia, Combo Bomb Games, and asked him to see if he wanted to give me any information on what the game is like. Amazingly, he actually did. First, I asked him the name of the guy in the top hat who he said was Wallace. Then I asked exactly where the game takes place. In the trailers, we don't know much about it. He said it's an indoor amusement park, and unlike most mascot horror games, it's not underground. Combo Bomb Games then did something I didn't expect. He sent me screenshots of the game that aren't on the Steam page. This one shows the player carrying a wand in front of the Wallace poster. I speculate this wand is the primary mechanic of the game, though it's unclear how it will work. The next screenshot he sent me is this weird tunnel. It looks like a railway of some sort littered with different construction debris. It's unclear clear what this tunnel will lead to in the final game, but the graphics do look really good. The final screenshot he sent me is this main menu screen, showing Wallace in the middle in some sort of dilapidated room. We can see the UI buttons in the bottom. These screenshots are just sneak peeks of the game, so click the link in the description to wishlist Toytopia on Steam, and play it for yourself when it comes out. Next up is Radio Wave. Radio Wave currently has two chapters released. Chapter 1 starts out in a cutscene. Someone is speaking to you on the phone as you drive up to Radio World. The man on the phone explains that you're a detective who was sent to Radio World and that you need to find someone named Tim Spencer who used to work at Radio World and was the guy who hacked the robots. You're supposed to find and arrest him, but it is unclear what he's doing inside. The phone guy explains that the robots have gone crazy with disappearances happening inside the facility. The game's main tool is a radio that the player carries. They use this to activate different equipment throughout the facility. The whole game is eerily liminal and quiet. The only thing you hear is the beeping of your radio. You find notes on the ground about malfunction reports, employees reporting strange behavior with the hyper-intelligent robots. Eventually, the main mascot, Radio Wave, attacks you. At the end of the game, you take an elevator down and Radio Wave falls into the abyss. Now, Chapter 2 introduces Telebot, a robot who hasn't been hacked yet and tries to help you escape. After solving a couple puzzles, Radio Wave starts attacking you, but this time when you die, you don't just respawn like you do in the first chapter. Instead, you have to complete this 8-bit platformer minigame similar to the one in Sister Location. At the end of Chapter 2, Telebot turns out to be evil, and she traps you in this room. But out of nowhere, Radio Wave tackles her and sets you free. After this, you activate the elevator to leave and return to the surface where the game ends. 
Okay, this game isn't the best thing ever, but you can tell there was a lot of hard work and passion put into it. So far, there's only two chapters made, and the developer said a third chapter is possible, but he's currently remaking the models and art style for it. Overall, the story is pretty straightforward, but I wanted to get as much of the lore as possible, so I messaged the developer and asked him a couple questions. One thing that wasn't explained in the story is why, at the end of chapter 2, Radio Wave sets you free. He was just trying to kill you earlier in the game, so why did he all of a sudden want to help you escape? Well, I asked the developer this, and he said, it was a different radio wave. It has some different features and is an older model. His name is Radio Mare. Radio Wave himself only appears in the chapter to destroy the bridge. The radio wave I've been referring to wasn't actually the real one, which makes me feel like an idiot for not noticing. Another thing that was confusing me in the story was why Tim Spencer even wanted to hack the robots in the first place. A note on the ground said that he was an old founder of Radio World, but I couldn't find anything on what the original motive was. Well again, I asked the developer and he said this. He was the ex-co-founder of the company who left after the other co-founder killed his daughter and wanted to take revenge and tarnish his company. All in all, Radio Wave is a cool concept of a mascot horror game. Its liminal atmosphere and story make it oddly unsettling to play. The developer told me that the first chapter took 2-3 to three months to make, while the second took 2 months. As much as people will say about this game, I think it's a solid work and can easily be built up greater in chapter 3 which will have a newer art style that fits a lot better. I'm excited to see where this one goes, and as always, you can play this for yourself by clicking the link in the description. Hi, my name is Mike Hampton, and I invite you to a wonderful candy factory where you are going to have an amazing time. We have a playground, a theater, and most importantly, candy! And you can also meet our amazing mascot buddy, Bon Bon or have a factory tour and see how we make sweets, candy, and more. So what are you waiting for? Come on down to Candy World. We can't wait. Candy World is a game that is currently in development by Static Games. From looking at the Static Games YouTube channel, this appears to be their first project. According to the description of the trailer, you play as someone who comes back to Candy World after years, but something's hiding in the darkness. Obviously, it's not the best looking game out there, but I think it has something to it. There's clearly work put into the level design, and I applaud the developer for that. There's an aesthetic that they're going for, and I think they accomplished it quite well. Mechanics-wise, we can't be sure of what exactly the game will consist of, but we can speculate from what we see in the trailer. Firstly, we see a glimpse of the player shutting close this grate on the wall, so there could be ventilation shafts. We also see the player flip this lever which opens a giant door. Clearly there's some sort of hiding or warding off mechanic, but until it releases we can never know for sure. The trailer shows that there is this weird candy-like creature who is stalking the player. This mascot is mentioned in the Candy World VHS as Bon Bon. We see Bon Bon in different places in the ad VHS and the trailers, mostly as a cartoon. He appears to be Candy World's head mascot. We don't see any other mascots in the trailers we have, so it's unclear whether there will be more mascots when the game releases. According to the Candy World ad VHS, the game takes place in some sort of factory slash children's entertainment establishment. It's never said why this place is abandoned. The only hint we get is that in the trailer it says, too much stuff has happened. Another thing displayed in the trailer is, he likes you. This is obviously referring to Bon Bon, but both of these messages are inherently ambiguous. However, there are some theories I have about this game. Here's what I think is going on. You play as an ex-coworker at Candy World, and you come back to the factory years after it's been abandoned. As you enter the facility, you're unaware that the head mascot of Candy World, Bon Bon, is still roaming the complex. Bon Bon has seen the horrors of what happened at Candy World, and after being trapped in there for years, he is desperate to see another human, so much so that he'll do anything to find you. Alright, I know this trailer looks very low quality. I could be looking way too much into this, but there's a good chance that the developer actually put work into the story, and I'll take that chance to see if I can piece it together. Make sure to go check this channel out. There's no game page yet, but I'll link the Static Games channel in the description. Circus of Tim Tim is currently being developed by Mascot Bro Studios, who are actually the same guys that are publishing Toytopia. This game looks like a mesh between Poppy Playtime and Firewatch. The description from the Steam page says that this is a stealth horror game where two siblings try to sneak inside a rundown haunted carnival. The player has to use stealth mechanics to evade enemies while finding lost items in the circus. It's not entirely clear what these lost items are yet, but you'll have to use a metal detector to find them as quickly as possible. You'll also have to find tickets 
to open doors by this weird booth master. This game looks like it has an open world map, which isn't common in most mascot horror games, which usually have a more linear structure. Another thing interesting about this is the graphics. It's very stylized with a low poly art style. There's also this thick purple fog everywhere. This game's story looks pretty straightforward. You play as a kid who is exploring this old amusement park with a giant mascot trying to kill you, but it's still not clear why there's even a giant mascot in the first place, or why this park is abandoned at all. After doing some thinking, I have a theory for this game that I think fits. My theory is that this whole game is inside the player's head as one big nightmare. This would explain the thick purple fog and why there's not a single person here. The child that you're playing as is having a dream where the mascot from the carnival is trying to kill them. Whatever items the player is trying to find are symbolic of something with a deeper meaning behind each of them. Of course, we don't know what these items are yet so we can't know for sure what they'll symbolize, but you can keep that in mind when the game comes out. At the end of the game, I predict that you will wake up from this nightmare and you'll find out the true meaning of this horrible dream. But that's just a theory. This game is being developed by two guys from the Mascot Bros Studio team, and I'll link the Steam page in the description for you to wishlist it. Speaking of the Mascot Bro team, I recently mentioned that they're the guys publishing Toytopia, but they're also publishing another game that I myself am making, Tilt. Tilt is a portal inspired puzzle game that I'm developing where you carry a gun that can manipulate gravity in a huge facility in the sky. This isn't a mascot horror game, but I'm quite honestly a bit worn out of mascot horror, and I think this will be a nice refresher. It's currently available for wishlisting on Steam, so go wishlist it now by clicking the link in the description. Basics in Intermediate Filmmaking is a game that I released a few months ago. I already made a full video explaining the backstory of how I made it, which you can check out in the description. The game takes place in an abandoned nuclear power plant where the company's mascot, Gassy the Gas Man, tries to kill you. The player carries a camera which he uses to solve puzzles around the facility and escape. I won't go into any more detail because it's a lot of work to write and edit, so just go check out the video I already made on it. Minced is a game made by Goose Studios and it takes place in an abandoned meat processing facility. This game's mascot is Chuck Steak, a giant slab of meat who's trying to kill you. Minced currently has two chapters released already and a third one may be coming soon. Okay, I can't talk about this game without mentioning that I know Goose Studios IRL, and I actually helped work on both chapters in person. If you want to play these chapters for yourself, go subscribe to Goose and click the itch.io link in the description to download it. Because I helped make Minced, I know all the lore that Goose Studios made for it, so it wouldn't be fair if I just tell you guys. However, you can theorize yourself by playing the game and checking out Goose's videos on it, so go check it out. The Nutcracker is one of my favorite mascot horror games featured in this video. The description for the game reads as follows. A mascot survival horror game where you turn detective and learn the truth about disappearances within a local shopping mall. Evade and outwit the Nutcracker whilst finding out what happened to the missing. The Nutcracker is a survival horror game set in the town of Mystic Peak where disappearances around a local shopping mall and more specifically the now abandoned Bailey's Toy Store has caught your attention. A chance viewing of an online video captures your interest as you explore the urban legend of the Nutcracker. So this game takes place in a shopping mall and from the trailer it genuinely looks good. This game looks to be an open world map which I applaud anytime I see. From the Steam page it looks like there will be two game modes in the game, story and survival mode. I'm going to start with story mode, this is what the Steam page says about it. A cat and mouse encounter between the player and the main protagonist, the Nutcracker. You are given the task of solving the disappearances within a local shopping mall set in the fictional town of Mystic Peak. You must do this while evading capture, outwitting the Nutcracker, and, hopefully, escaping with your life. Access numerous secret locations as you explore the vast underground system the mall is built on. These hidden unlockable areas are part of a large expanding map which will reveal further areas and buildings as well as reveal the truth about those who were captured before you. Is this a Nutcracker acting alone or is there someone else behind these disappearances? So from this, we know that the player is trying to uncover why people are disappearing inside the mall and the Nutcracker is the cause of it. This also indicates that there is someone else who is using the Nutcracker as a way to kidnap people so this person is probably really important to the story of this game. Survival mode is where the player will have to escape the mall as fast as possible. This suggests that the player is trapped inside the mall in the main game. But there's one very interesting thing in the Steam page that I haven't mentioned yet. The very last paragraph of the Nutcracker Steam page says this. Real World Ties. This game blends fiction with reality, with links to real world stories and locations. Additional clues and information regarding the intent and motivation for capturing people within the mall is spread both in the game and reality. So this game's lore is actually tied to real world cases of disappearances. I looked up real world cases of mall kidnappings, and there are a few, but none that we can know for sure would be connected to the Nutcracker. We'll have to wait till it releases. 
If you want to check this game out for yourself, click the link in the description as always. Fluffy Sweet Factory is in development by Shining Star Games. This game doesn't have a Steam page, so the information is limited. The only things I have are tweets from the developers and the YouTube trailer. From the looks of it, it appears to be set in an abandoned sweet factory, and I presume Fluffy is the mascot of the game. The description from the trailer says, Explore an abandoned candy factory and try to stay alive. Find secrets about this location and what happened there, but be careful. You are not alone. They are always following you. This indicates that there will be multiple mascots in the game. The teaser trailer shows an empty room with shipping containers and barrels. The developer is pretty active on Twitter about this game, so you can follow him if you want more updates. Currently, there's a couple screenshots and clips of the game here. One of them is a huge room with boxes everywhere, and it looks like a more industrial part of the game than what was shown in the trailer. There's also this two second clip of the player running, and this screenshot of a room in the game. We can see blue piping in the walls, and there looks to be a barrel in the corner with what I think is the Fluffy Sweet Factory's logo. There's a few more screenshot leaks that the devs posted on their Twitter, and I'm just gonna go through each one. This one has a whiteboard with some blue light coming in. This appears to be moonlight, so I don't think the setting will entirely be underground. This screenshot has a computer on the desk with boarded off walkways. The fact that the walkways are boarded off shows that before the sweet factory was abandoned, for some reason, the employees boarded off these, most likely to stop whatever was destroying the facility from reaching them. This one is a dark room with lockers and writing on the wall that says, steal your face. These two screenshots were posted together with the caption, the office sector, so it looks like there'll be different sectors of the map that the player can explore. These two screenshots were also posted together with the caption, the factory will collapse. One of these screenshots shows a walkway with lockers lining the walls. At the end of the walkway, you can see the exit that's gated off. The other one is a dark hallway with text, light wakes up the dead ones. I'm not sure what this phrase means, but it's repeated more times in other tweets from the developer. It could mean that light may be implemented as a mechanic in the game, either to ward off or to attract different mascots. These these next screenshots are older, so I'll flip through them a bit faster. This one with more lockers, this blurry one with giant lollipops, these two ones with lockers and chairs, this dark hallway, and this stairway. There's also these two posters, I'm not sure the lore significance of them. One is about the opening of the factory, and the other is someone who says their friend named Andrew Stain is missing for three days in the factory. My guess is that whoever Andrew Stain was, was turned into a mascot by the company. And the message, steal your face, that we saw earlier, also contributes to this idea. But again, I messaged the developer of Fluffy Sweet Factory to see if he'd be willing to give me any more information. Amazingly, he sent me a whole zip file containing new screenshot leaks. Some of them I already saw in his tweets, but a lot of them were completely unseen before. The first screenshot is this, the cartoon design of the main mascot in the game, Chester. Chester is some sort of bird character, and in this picture, he looks very violent. The rest of the screenshots he sent me look to have very high quality graphics. A lot of them are shots of hallways and different areas of the facility. In some of them, we can see cardboard cutouts of Chester, as well as different posters on the walls. I really like the way these graphics look. Some of these parts look very child appealing and colorful, and others look more industrial and commercial. The developer also sent me this poster that reads, Hello, Mr. Andrew Simon. I want to tell you that I've noticed a weird smell that comes from the chocolate we're using. Maybe a broken pipe in one of the chocolate makers or something? Signed by David Alexander. This appears to be a letter to the person who was mentioned in the posters we saw earlier, Andrew Simon. From this, it looks like Andrew Simon is a worker at the factory so hopefully we'll get some voice lines from him in the game. There's also this really cool screenshot with massive shelves everywhere holding boxes. All in all, this game looks pretty interesting. The graphics look very good and there seems to be a lot of story behind it. Keep in mind that the developers are continuously posting announcements and trailers, so I'll leave the link in the description so you can keep up to date. Choppies is one of the highest quality games on this list, graphics-wise. This is because the developers, Team Monkey Games, started using Unreal Engine 5, which is what I use for my games, and is very very good at making stuff with good graphics. The mechanics revealed as of now are very scarce. In the trailer, we see the player flip open this fuse box, as well as run and jump over boxes. This might indicate that some parkour will be implemented in the game, as we also see this stairway that looks very parkourable. The game takes place in a restaurant, which looks to be either abandoned or run down. According to the Steam page, you play as John, who has to navigate this restaurant and solve puzzles. We don't know who John is or why he's in the restaurant in the first place. Apparently, this restaurant is also a museum, and Choppy the Rabbit mascot is roaming the halls. 
There isn't a whole lot to comment on story-wise because the information is so limited, but graphically we do know what we're getting. But just to make sure I didn't miss anything, I went on the Team Monkey Games Discord server to see what I could find. Firstly, I found this video where the developer shows a scene with a huge needle-like arm stabbing through a door. This is Choppy the Rabbit's arm, and we can see him more clearly when we see his full model. I also found these screenshots also from the Discord. These definitely look much higher in quality than a lot of other mascot horror games. However, we still don't have much to go off of with the story. So so, I reached out to the developer to ask him some questions. The first thing I asked him about was the backstory of the main character of the game, John. He told me this. He is the main character. He has something to show for Joe, his best friend. He needs to meet Joe. While he sets up this place for a meeting, a rabbit comes up and ruins all the plans. From this, we know that there is another character named Joe. We don't know what John has to show at the restaurant, though I speculate that it's something paranormal. I asked the developer a couple more questions, but to avoid spoilers, he chose not to answer these. This game is currently on Steam, listed as coming soon, and I linked it in the description for you to wishlist. Toto Zoo is a first-person horror thriller being developed by Jail Rat. This game is technically not a mascot horror game, but it resembles some aspects of one, so I decided to put it in here. Toto Zoo is probably the most unique game out of all the games we've looked at. This game takes place in an abandoned zoo where you play as an urban explorer who wants to gather content. Toto Zoo looks to have multiple choice story interactions similar to the Stanley Parable. This is something I don't think is in any of the other games we've looked at. Usually mascot horror games have very linear gameplay with no choice for different endings, so it's refreshing to see something like this. This game's mechanics are also very interesting. They are heavily audio based where every noise you make in the game and in real life are important to your playthrough. It uses microphone detection so that the animals and threats in the game can hear you. It also includes stealth movement mechanics. You can peek around corners, run, jump, throw physics objects, and use your flashlight. The characters in Toto Zoo don't look to be mascots, but they are recognizable threats. The main one appears to be Gus the Gorilla, who has advanced AI to make decisions based on your playstyle. Or as the Steam page puts it, Think of him as a living animal that wants to stay undisturbed. If you provoke him too many times, his anger will build. In the screenshots, we see this abandoned car in the game, which could mean that the whole town is abandoned. While we don't know much about the story, my theory is that something happened at the zoo which caused everyone to evacuate the town. The zoo may resemble something like Chernobyl that infected the animals and caused disaster, and the player is trying to uncover what really happened. That's about it with the video. This was very hard to make, and it's my longest video yet, so make sure to like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments if you want a part 2, or if you're a small developer wanting me to cover your game. There's plenty of other mascot horror games I could cover but didn't in this video for the sake of time. I didn't even mention Bubbo's Fun Zone, which is also being published by Mascot Bros Studios and was inspired by Minst. Or I mean, you know, Joy at Playworld, Pizzy's Parlor, Funny Park, Oddbod's Playcare, Buzzy Kindergarten. It might be best that I don't talk about these, but let me know if you want me to make a part 2. Make sure to let me know any other mascot horror games you'd want me to talk about in the comments below. But for now, please wishlist Tilt on Steam by clicking the link in the description and like and subscribe. Also, if you really like this video, you can support me on Patreon, where you can get access to exclusive content and devlogs. But that's just a theory, a mascot horror game theory. Thanks for watching.